Yes. Oh, very nice. That's Actually, cool. I remember watching the uh, the intro to the show, um, <laughs> and uh, Coley had, I think, talked down on you or something. She said, oh, this is going to be a girl. I mean, they pretty much tried to foresee what the show was like, so it was her and some other people. Do you, have, do you take the criticism that you see? I mean, does anyone comment on you and how you act in, in front of everyone? Or? I called her out on that, and Paula, too, because I, I did a convention with Paula, um, like, still week that week after I saw that. And I was like, Paula, what is, what is, what's going on? You're just a girl. And she was like, I didn't know you, you know? Like, uh. <laughs> we were told to be, you know, whatever. And I met Ruthie, too, actually. Um, and, yeah, you know, I don't I don't know. I don't, who cares? You know, it's the casting special, like. Right. So you want to talk more a little bit about the VMAs? Because that sounds like one of the pretty cool, neat, Things that uh, um, the VMAs were awesome, and <laughs> all go together. And I went to Vegas that weekend, and just um, I went with a few friends who were from LA. Mm -hmm. It was crazy because once we got there, we found out about um, all these things that MTV had set up for us to go to like gifting suites and you know do really cool stuff like that. So Las Vegas was a blast in general. The first slot I sat down on. Um, I won, so I knew it was going to be a very, very. What was what was the real reaction to Britney Spears at the VMAs? <laughs> Being that you were there live. It was the beginning of the show, and everybody was still like sitting down and socializing, and it was just so low energy that it felt like it was like rehearsal before the show actually started. Yeah. And oh wow! So it hit me that like it. Okay, this is Britney Spears, and this is the VMAs, and oh my god, you know, because it was just, it didn't feel like it. Right, so they all knew it was a train wreck pretty much, right? Well, it wasn't, it wasn't like people were sitting there, you know, booing her or anything like that. We were just like, oh, okay, somebody's on stage right now, you know, it's supposed to be, <laughs> what's going on? That's so funny. Now, you yourself, Parisa, you sang on the show. Um, yeah. Has there been any approach by any music producers or anything about your potential singing career down the line? Um... I was working with a producer before I actually got the show. Um, I, I was doing, like, sporting events and stuff, and a producer referred me to uh, the anthem. So he really liked my voice. And his name is Jimmy Greco, and he's won Grammys and stuff, and he really loved my voice. And, uh, and we started working together on my album before I graduated, before I got Real World. So going away, we sort of had to put pause on that. And now that I'm back, we're just starting from scratch because I feel like Everything's kind of changed in my life, and the stuff I'm thinking about is kind of different. So, mm -hmm. working with someone right now um, is really great, and I'm excited for everything to come with that. You know, I want to get back to work. Right. So, is that where you kind of? I <laughs> said, congratulations. Um, is that where you can kind of see yourself down the line, or do you see a uh, real world road rules challenge or whatever those shows are? <laughs> do you see yourself staying in the real world family? <laughs> you know, I wanted to finish up with school so that I could form and you know get back into that. I was taking classes with Stella Adler over that summer and, you know, like, doing acting and stuff. So I really miss that. I think that's what I want to go back to. That's why I wanted to get done with school so quickly. And now that I'm, I'm done with school, I, I really want to get focused again and get back into performing. Mm -hmm. I'm still young. Right. I'm still put off grad school. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Do it as much as you can. Enjoy the 15 minutes or more, maybe. <laughs> Um, so I want to talk a little bit more about Sydney because that I guess you were very fortunate to go to a, a pretty exotic place rather than you know Key West or wherever they were <laughs> in the past. Uh, were you? What was your reaction when you found out that this real world was actually going to be in Sydney? Well, I almost made Denver. So once I got to Sydney, oh. I just hugged and kissed the producers and said, "Thank you so much for not casting me in Denver." <laughs> <laughs> now I get to be in Sydney, Australia for four months. Right. Um, it was incredible. We lived in paradise. I don't. Yeah. How, how long ago did they actually film it between when it's filmed and when it's on, when it's on TV? Mm -hmm. Between February and late May. We wrapped in, at the end of May, and I was home by June. Very cool. Hmm. Yeah, it was, it was long. Cool. <laughs> yeah, that does. That seems long. Mm -hmm. Are there any like, boundaries of how far into your personal life they, can, they like, agree not to show like, while you're there? Um. There's no agreement on anything not to show. I mean, we sign contracts for a reason. They have the right to our life story. So mm -hmm. there's no, yeah, there's no, hey, can you not show that, please? No. <laughs> like, there's never a point where you're on the phone with, like, a parent or your sister or something that's like, they can't, you know, 
no, put that on? No, have all of that. I mean, you saw me on the phone with my mom in the first episode. Right, right. right. You know, we're talking in person. There's a translator. <laughs> 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 So, did you enjoy the experience in real and in Sydney more, or do you enjoy the after effects of the, you know, the PR stuff now, the recognition that you're getting? What, what part of it do you uh, seem to enjoy more? It's two different worlds. I feel like now is sort of back to reality, but it's not real, you know, because it's not real to watch yourself on TV every week and go through all. It's not the real world. <laughs> That's what it's like. I know. I'm there. You know what it is down there. It was. It was a transition. It was different. You knew that it wasn't your reality, that it wasn't like your real life back at home and the people you love and cared about. But there's, there's a point where you start to really care about the people that you live with and the stuff that's going on around you. And you do, it does become your life, you know? And, and I remember, you know, just times where I couldn't fathom coming home and not having Kellyanne and Kahata and Isaac and Dunbar, you know, around mm -hmm. me. Um, and that was really hard. That's really hard to, like, oh, it's like college in a way, you know? You, you start a whole new life, and then you have to go back during Christmas or something and realize it's not there, and you miss it. Right. That's pretty cool. Now, I wanted to ask you also, because you had mentioned about how, I guess, they targeted you in a minority group at NYU, and you seem to be the real token minority on the show. You know, there's no blacks, there's no gays. I mean, how do you feel about being the one that people kind of... Referred to as the minor. I mean, it, that's true. I mean, real world it kind of tries to get a diverse group. I had people who I know say, "Why do they have two blondes on the show?" I mean, how do you feel about just being the one that people refer to as the as a token minority? I guess, yeah. Um, you know, in the beginning in the house, it was it was kind of weird because I really did go in there expecting like people from all different you know backgrounds and races and sexual preferences and you know flavors, all that kind of stuff, and. Um, it was eye opening to, to realize, that, like, okay, there's no one else that, you know, um, from a different cultural background or something like that. And that, you know, everybody was straight, everybody was, like, Christian, everybody was from either the South or the West Coast. And, and then it sort of became, like, wow, I'm really different in a lot of ways, you know? But mm -hmm. as you start to get to know people more and more, you realize that there are a lot of very human qualities that sort of bring us all together, you know, so you have something in common with everyone. There's, there's definitely a common um, denominator lying there somewhere, you know, so you find other things to relate to people on. It's, you have different views, but you can definitely teach each other something and right. pick a little something, something up. So it was nice in a way um, to have people from other backgrounds, but it would have been cool to, I don't know, have... I don't know, <laughs> Any, anything else where I wasn't like, I, I remember one point looking around, I'm like, am I the brownest person here? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure you, you saw a little of the different cultural background within Sydney, and I think this week's episode has you involved in some sort of love triangle with a, a Sydney boy. Aussie boy, yeah. Yes. Do you want to talk about that? <laughs> I don't think I'm allowed to, unfortunately. <laughs> I don't think But I'm... it's going to get juicy if we're really... <laughs> Yeah, but Kellyanne and I just called each other as soon as we saw the previews. We're like, oh, my God, the Alex thing is coming. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's cute. Yeah. So was, was Kellyanne probably one of your long-lasting friends? I mean, you have fought with pretty much a lot of people within the house. Hasn't Did everyone end on a good note in, in terms of just relationship-wise? I think so. I think, you know, when you're leaving an experience like that, you, um, you recognize that it's is very unique. It's really special, you know. So you fight with your brothers and sisters, but at the end of the day, we love each other, and I think there's something. Mm -hmm. That's it. All right. Did you guys have any more questions? No, I think I'm good. Oh, All right. My my crew member wanted me to ask you about gay Mardi Gras. <laughs> How was that experience for you? Awesome. It was incredible. <laughs> <laughs> if only the other people ever. could have come. <laughs> what was that? I said, if only the other people in the house would have come, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, if if you've ever done um, Halloween in the Village, yes, <laughs> it's either on par or crazier and better than that, which oh. is hard to say. Wow. Oh. Really, <laughs> really awesome. And yeah, you Marty. Um, we were there. We were sort of like, dude, we're so excited that we're here. We couldn't believe it. And we got to walk through the parade. Like, they actually had a special section for us, and, and we got, like, the royal treatment. So it was incredible. <laughs> so awesome. Very nice. So overall, your experience of the real world, if you could sum it up, what would you say? Two thumbs up.
Two thumbs up. <laughs> Cisco and Eber. <laughs> All right. Well, Brisa, thank you so much for calling in. I hope I didn't take out too much time of your busy schedule now. No, uh, no, no, no. No, no, no. All right. Well, thank you again. And I'm sure the students here at Dinghamton University are very interested in hearing about this. We'll replay throughout the week if they missed it now. So they'll, they'll be talking about it, hopefully. <laughs> awesome. All right. Thanks so much again, Brisa. Bye. Okay. All righty. Bye. All right, that awesome. so that was, that was the, cool. our little chat with Parisa. It was definitely worth the wait. If you guys want to call in now, we have a few more minutes left. Well, if we want to do a final thought.